you guys saw the rankings of 21 boots over 2021. And some of you guys are like, where's Olathe? Where's Anderson Bean? Where are some of these other brands? I still tried some of those other brands this year, except I couldn't include them in that ranking because I only did quick impressions. And it's gotta be fair, but I can't leave them out completely. So what we're gonna do today is talk about the quick impressions that are so memorable this year, and I can't go on to next year without mentioning them. So let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Back in April, people were starting to chill out a little bit. The world opened back up. The airlines started doing more business. And I was like, hmm, how am I gonna spend my summer? And I was out back here, and uh, I got this phone call from Phil over at Hondo Boots. And he says, hey JC, I got this crazy, crazy proposal for you. And Phil says, I'm gonna go to all of my stores, or a lot of the stores who carry Hondo Boots out west. And it's gonna be like this road trip sort of deal. Would you wanna come? And I said, hell yeah, I wanna come, Phil. Let's do this. So, uh, flew out, met Phil in Utah, and we went across like four states, visited uh, maybe a dozen or more boot stores, like small mom and pop boot stores, none of this Cavender's or Boot Barn shit. We're like the real boot stores. We visited all of those, and on average two videos from each one of those places, I had the chance to try so many boots. It was so awesome, so grateful uh, to Phil for taking me along. It was an amazing opportunity, and I remember some good, good boots, like boots that I wanted to try more of, and some that the impression wasn't as good. We got some good and some bad, and I'm gonna go through them. Here's the first one that left a really good impression on me, and it was actually the last store that I went to with Phil, Lou Talbert's, and it was the Anderson Bean Capybara boot. This boot was awesome. Not only did I wanna try Anderson Bean on this trip like really badly and I got to try two, but this was a leather that I hadn't tried before. It's really supple, really beautiful. I love the natural color of it with its hybrid outsole and it was a beautiful, beautiful boot to try. I wish I get the chance to try an Anderson boot like that in the future because they do so many cool things with different leathers. This boot left me wanting to wear it more. And I guess that's what you want in a boot, right? Carol says, maybe memorable in the wrong way. Well, here's one that was memorable in the wrong way at Bighorn Boots. It was the Georgia Carbotech boots. Now, some of you guys requested a review or a quick impression about Georgia boots, and I felt like the zipper and the counter lock was just more gimmicky than useful. I felt like it was uh, sort of, I felt like it was just sort of trying too hard to cut those corners. And after tr trying this, I would much rather, much rather choose an Ariat or an Abilene, which is in the same price range. Going back to the good one. This boot left an incredible impression. This actually was the first store that we went to, Vickers Western Store in Pocatello, Idaho, right? And I saw this boot on the shelf and I'm like, wow, that's a pretty boot. I don't know if that's gonna be anywhere else because it's so unique. It was the Hondo 2026. This was beautiful. The first boot that I looked at on the Hondo Tour in Pocatello thought it would be a rare boot because I hadn't seen it before, but it was in more than half the stores. It was in more than half the stores, guys. It was everywhere. This was one of the most popular boots on that trip. One of the most popular, and it's got that double uh, leather outsole, that stacked leather outsole, so it's got that extra leather midsole in there. Awesome. See, the thing is, though, they carry that boot at Cavender's, too. But there's just a slight difference with the one they carry at Cavender's and the ones that you can get in the mom and pop shops. Do you guys know what it is? You can only find it with that green toe bug at mom and pop shops. 
That's the only place where it has a green toe bug. And I think it looks so much better with that green toe bug. They did a color on color, Cavenders, like it's just a brown toe bug, but the green is where it's at. I don't know about you guys, but I think Cavenders missed out on that. And if you want it the good way, you gotta get it from mom and pop shops, that Vickers Western store, you know how it is. Okay, so the fourth boot that I was impressed by, but it didn't leave such a good impression, was the Boule Challenger. I found this one at Al's Bootery and Repair Shop. The first time I ever tried an, a Boule Challenger, and it is not like the regular Boule line at all. The outsole is the biggest disappointment because I love what the leather outsole is like on the regular Boule's. They made some cuts here with their Challenger line to compete with lower budget boots, but I feel like it would have been better and uh, a little bit easier to understand the differences in this boot if they decided to make another brand like the Anderson Bean family did, right? They have Anderson Bean and then they also have Horsepower, which is their budget brand. The Boulet Challenger is so different. I think that they should have started a new brand if they were going to do that because there's really nothing wrong with starting a budget brand. There needs to be budget brands because people have budgets. So if they wanted to, they should have just named it Challenger Boots rather than Boulet Challenger Boots because uh, I feel like um, it, it brought down the brand just a little bit. Um, and it makes some of you uh, misunderstand what the brand is all about because then at Moss Sal's Boots and Tack, I came across a Boulet that was beautiful, that was completely different and it's the Boulet that I know and love. It's the Boulet 6335 with the stovepipe tops. Oh man, I loved this Boulet. It was my favorite Boulet that I looked at on a trip. Beautiful blue and awesome white collar. Look at that. Plus the leather is shrunken bison. That outsole is the outsole that I was talking about. That's that badass outsole that lasts so long. It's a good looking boot, shrunken bison. That's tough stuff. Not only that, let me pull that up again. It's got a rubber midsole too. There's that black line right there. That's that rubber midsole, right? That's a rubber midsole. That makes that a tough boot. Check that out. I love the Boulet 60. 335 a little bit tall for the practicality in my life but it is everything everything that I love about Boulet plus so much more just know when you go into stores the Boulet Challenger is different from other Boulet boots so that's one big thing that I came away from love that Boulet 6335 another boot that sort of left a bad taste in my mouth. It was a, it was definitely a mistake, but also proves a, sort of a feeling that I've been having of a specific brand kind of slacking a little bit, you know, being a little hit and miss. And that is Dan Post. This Dan Post Kingsley Cayman was two different colors. Look at how bad that color matching is. It's bad, it's embarrassing, but not only that, it's a little bit off balance wise and the outsole just isn't, it's like they, it's like overkill. Like, why does an outsole need to be like that? So, it's like they tried too hard in some places and not hard enough in others. It's just a super awkward boot, and I don't know what Dan Post was trying to do with it because it left me really confused about the brand. It, what, how did this get through? It's not, the, it's not the store's fault, right? It's not the store's fault. I, could you imagine trying to go through all of the boots in every single box? while also running a boot store and a tack place and it's just like how how much do you want to put on the small business owner you got to have that qa damn post you got to have that quality assurance and uh that one definitely slipped through that one is a huge mistake that should never happen and uh it kind of leaves me in question about the future of damn post they gotta step it up they gotta step it up all right one brand that doesn't need to step it up this boot was a tank this boot was a tank and I found it at King's Ropes. It's the Olathe CB7 with the rough out and the blue tops and a midsole. This boot is so tough, it's a tank. It's got a hybrid outsole, but it's also got a rubber midsole. Like, 
It's a beast! And it looks really cool too. This boot is a beast and I wanted so badly. That is probably the boot that I wanted so, so badly to try more of. Just a tank, guys. Like, why do you need to be to build a boot that tough? And I want to try it now that I know that there is a boot that tough. <laughs> Another one that I'm a little confused about uh, from the uh, quick impressions was the Twisted X. Now, I, I looked at two Twisted X. One that I expected, sort of like an elephant print, uh, some plastic parts, but then I went to Cowboys 2 and I saw this one, Twisted X Men's Ranch uh, Western Boot. The leather was really cool and I was talking with them there and they said that this is a new direction for uh, Twisted X, but the only problem was they still had that composite heel that looks like a fake stacked leather and a plastic footbed. And I'm really concerned about a plastic footbed Kraken. And I've seen some of you guys have said that that plastic footbed had, had cracked on you. And I want to try one just to see if it'll crack on me too. Because it might be fine. The plastic might be okay. But I'm just really concerned about it and I want to try more. I want to try a Twisted X for an extended test in the future and just really, I don't know, do some do some shovel work or something where I'm kicking something just to see how that plastic footbed holds up. I'm not confident uh, that it will, but I again, I want to be proven wrong. So that one left an interesting impression where I wanted to learn more about that boot and hopefully someday I will. The last boot that left an incredible impression on me from the Hondo Tour is a Hondo boot. It's the first Hondo Ostrich that I've ever tried, the Hondo 1804. This boot was so beautiful, the softest ostrich that I'd ever tried. A beautiful Hondo exotic and I would love, absolutely love to spend more time in this boot because seriously guys, the most supple ostrich ever. And ostrich is supple to begin with. Like you guys like ostrich because it is so supple. But just think of your most supple ostrich and then just a little bit more supple brand new. It's so soft. So those are my nine boots that I'm still thinking about from this year. Hondo, just incredible. Just incredible, Phil, for taking me along. Impressed by some boots, distressed by others. But in every case, I'm still left in wonder. Yeah, can't wait to do more quick impressions next year. Oh man. You guys let me know what boots you want to see more of, and I'll try to my best to get a hold of them. Or find a place that has them. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ha <laughs> ha.